Greetings everyone, this is Rock and Roll Spot Connection with the Weekly Comic Book Roundup. And we've already covered this week's Marvel books, now let's cover next week's DC books. Yes, you heard that correctly. I said next week's DC books. Now, okay, first, to be perfectly honest, there are a few that are listed on their, for their schedule, that are scheduled to be released next week that uh, did not arrive at the, uh, the shop I frequent. Which will remain nameless, so as not to potentially get in trouble. Um, however, uh, last week, in preparation, basically to be ready for the fact that yeah, you know, this coming Friday would be, or this, you know, the coming the Friday after new last week new comic book day would be a holiday. DC just kind of said, screw it, we'll just send everything on, you know. Everything for this and next week at once. And by mm, the shop I frequent said, oh, okay, fine, we'll put it all out this week. And then today they got next week's books in from DC, or at least, well, presumably next week's books. Hmm. Though there is the one from net, one from last week to, or well, technically this week. Damn. <sighs> okay. There's one from last week that still hasn't popped up, and there were a few for next week that didn't. They have yet to pop up, so we'll see if they if those pop up in the next week or so. Anywho, get, getting things started, we've got Dark Knight's Death Metal number seven, the finale. Where we left off, um, basically. Charged up with uh, anti-crisis energy, Wonder Woman taking on giants has basically become a goddess, and again, and uh, went out in an attempt to take on the one who laughs. The issue begins talking about how uh, you know as she as Wonder Woman rises from the earth, she suddenly sees everything with new eyes. <clears throat> she's been a god before, but she's been, now she's a more. She's the whole present all at once. Bruce battling a ruthless young version of himself, a bird song of evil, the Robin King. Clark fighting a superman whose rocket was lost on the way to Earth, corrupted by a million suns. She also sees the past. She sees everyone who has fallen to give them this chance. Superboy Prime. Above all, what she sees is that everything, everything, comes down to these next moments. She has to look in the future for, for hope. And th but then he laughs, and all she sees is him. But, uh, yeah, the two of them fight. Um, basically, when the Darkest Nights chain and went... And in fact, when he himself touches <coughs> Wonder Woman, it burns. But she shrinks down one of his uh, vanquishers and uh, smacks, smacks him in the mouth with it. They fight. Uh, he attacks the Titans. She saves them. But she, the, then he bum rushes her. They and they basically. <laughs> It's explained, he hits her so hard they fall back through time, back through history itself, past round tables and the birth of a new kind of human. And in fact, one of the uh, panels has Jason, has the demon making a, I forget the demon making a uh, rhyme about Camelot. Camelot, Camelot, by your beauty I'm struck. Even the demon must admit, what the, you know. Um, they ended up 160 million years ago. If I continue, we see uh, Jay fighting a, uh, a dark version of Dark Multiverse version of Wally. Um, or Barry. Barry facing a, a Dark Multiverse version of Wally within the Mobius chair. Um, Aquaman facing a uh, more sea monstery version of himself. Um, 
Swamp, the Swamp King facing off against Swamp Thing, uh, Ab Abigail Arcane and uh, uh, Harley Quinn. The Bat Family taking on uh, the Robin King and all of his Groblins. The Bat Villains getting involved as well. Um, the Superman family going up against the last son. It's not really working. Then we meet back up with Diana and the one who laughs at the beginning of the, multi the formation of the multiverse as Perpetua is forming it. And the one who laughs explains to Diana what's going to happen. Sure, if he, he you know, it, basically if she defeats him, the other hands, Perpetua's people, will show up and they will wipe the multiverse, the multiverse out of existence, regardless of what they of what Diana's done. Back in the battle, um, Barry is seemingly stopped, is shot at by the uh, Dark Wally, and then the rogues basically show up and uh, take him down as Barry provided quite the distraction. The mother of the alternate Aquaman tries to drown the other Atlanteans. And is promptly attacked by uh, Donna Troy, Hippolyta, and Artemis. However, the Groblins are swarming the Bat family. There's more than they can take. The Joker's had his guts ripped open. Barbara dies. Uh, with more coming, Damien and Bruce stand side by side. Damien looks at him and says, you know, this is it, I want... You know, I need you to know, I definitely would have been the best Batman. Which is a perfectly Damien thing to say. Um, <clears throat> Clark potentially sacrifices himself to take out the last son. Um, back at the beginning of all things... Diana uses the hand of Perpetua to smack the crap out of the one who laughs. And everyone just feels a sudden surge in power. Knocking, and Diana knocks the one who laughs through, through time, past round tables, the birth of a new kind of human. Past all of it, past the whole weird, wonderful, messy tapestry, to the end of everything, the death sun itself, into which all Earths, all stories were long ago absorbed, all matter right here in one place. Um, they continue the fight, and then, but the, the battle, the Robin King having cut off Batman's hand, stands seemingly triumphant. Bat family's dead, except for Batman. Well, Batman's also dead. Black Lantern and whatnot. And he and the Robin King is like you know. Even says, uh, "Can you, would you say I'm Batman in that in, in that voice? Would you? Oh, please." But uh, Batman makes a really good point. Think. You know, Robin King can't be all that bright if he thought that Batman would keep the real Black Lantern ring on his hand. And so then he says, so yeah, I'm Batman. But it feels even better to say, we're all Batman. As he now has an army of the dead. Two armies of the dead. Including Alfred, I might add. 
in space, Superman and the last time Dookie that one, Luther arrives, explaining that there's no way the universe is going to end without him getting to kill at least one damn Superman. And he explains that uh, the suit, he called it his Sunday best, he's never worn it before, it's powered by a capture truck and black hole named Sun DX6. Last Sun says, you know, it's nonsense, this suit would be unstable, any real damage would cause a black hole of it. And so we were in, and Lex says, I guess that's why I never worn it until now. And he activates the self-destruct and takes Last Sun with him. At the Death Sun, Wonder Woman continues to her fight against the one who laughs as the other hands show up. And she destroys him. And one of the hands comes to speak with her and takes on the Golden Age form of Wonder Woman and they talk and uh, they walk into the light together. Everything and everything goes basically, you know, hey, yeah, you know. Like it's explained that basically things are going to be things will be fixed. Uh, you'll still have that whole, you know, everything matters. The multiverse will be just restored, but different than before. All history, all stories will be remembered and set once and for all. No source wall or anything like that around it, or bound, bleed, I guess no bleed either, which, okay, that's interesting. And this is something that the, uh, hand had never done, so... Explain that you know everything will be new, new to the heroes and new to them. Greater threats, but greater possibilities as well. And then uh, Rock narrates the whole thing, or narrates the end, saying you know, it's usually two weeks after war, after the end of any war that you start getting the think pieces. But we they talk, you know, oh, Superman giving a speech, and you know. It's like after the after metal, there was a big party, just the heroes. But this time, it's everyone. Even, even your pal started rock. And then Barry pulls Wally aside because he wants to show Wally something. Telling him to vibrate at a certain frequency, 160.4 gigahertz, cosmic microwave background radiation frequency. And a, a orbiting building you know, called the refers to as the totality appears. The totality is the next stage of the halls of, ju of justice and doom. The members of this group are Hawk Girl, Martian Manor, Mr. Terrific, Vandal Savage, Talia Al Ghul, and Lex Luthor. But uh, it turns out that their Earth is no longer in the center. There appear to be two Earths in the center. So it looks like they've got some exploring and, you know, cataloging as well. And it's not just a multiverse now. It's they're part of a multiverse. And, they're, and that multiverse is part of an even larger multiverse, becoming becoming of an omniverse. And, it, and it's referred to as an infinite frontier. And we get some clips from of the uh, future, some of the future state books. But right now, the other Earth that seems to be in the center is only referred to as the Else World. Back in 1943, Earth Zero, Sergeant Rock, backward, is trying to write down everything he that, that had happened in a journal. In fact. Hawkman's journal. Before Rock and the JSA once again charge out in, to, to face the horrors of, of uh, Nazi Germany. And that is where the issue and the story ends.
Which brings us to our next title. Now, usually when an event title ends, we get, you know, the, the aftermath, the epilogue, and all that. Well, some... No, okay, that's... Okay, let's be honest. That's more of a Marvel thing. With DC, it's more a case of, okay, we're going to just do a whole month... We're going to do a whole bunch, you know, we're doing something to say everything is in, is this now. Which I think is probably where Future State's going to be coming in. But yeah, anyway. Future State's just a couple of months. It's just going to be a few months. And so, coming from the pages of Death Metal is Generations Shattered. Now, <clears throat> the story was first hinted at in... Uh, Detective Comics number 1027. Um, there was a, one of the stories within, within had it featured um, the Golden Age Batman being recruited by Commandy the Last Boy. So the issue begins in Earth. after the great disaster in Earth's future. Commandy and uh, Tufton are running from the bat beat, from the bats. And then comes the goneness, which takes Tufton as well as the bats. The mysterious cloaked figure shows up and saves Commandy, revealing himself to be a, an aged Booster Gold. Skeets has become a glove that he wears. However, a crossbow bolt hits Booster, and well, he's dying, and so he transfers the glove. Skeets the glove. To Commandy. And then at various points in time, various temporal characters realize something is wrong. Our man in the 853rd century, Perdigaton back in 1947, Reverse Flash in the 25th century, The Linear Men at Vanishing Point, the Time Trapper at Time's End, Rip Hunter in the Present, Abracadabra in the 64th century, and then Wave Rider in the Time Stream. Wave Rider comes upon the aged uh, Booster and tries to save him, but he disappears in the goneness. And there's someone wa watching who's been planning to do all this. Been planning all this. Basically, you know, why deal with the heroes at their best when you can, you know, deal with them more unfocused Ill and ill-prepared to stop him? So, um, Skeet, well, Skeet's face says, hey, we have to go, so we've got to travel through time and, and get people to help, that can help us. Uh, the Linear Men are then attacked by the mysterious, uh, by the mysterious mastermind behind everything. He says he's going to repurpose them to serve a new master. In the 31st century, the Legion, it appears to be the... Th um, I want to say the old school Legion. Basically, the ones that... The, the Legion that... From back in the Silver Age. But... A strange wave appears with various creatures from various points in time the universe showing up. Um, they're not here to attack. They're running. Uh, the temporal, the chronal wave hits uh, Saturn Girl. Um, Commander reaches through and grabs Superboy, however. But it turns out Skeet's commanding misunderstood. It was Brainiac 5 they needed, not Superboy. But there is someone who there is someone else smart enough they could potentially grab. So they go to the year nineteen ninety three in Metropolis. And they take Steel as he's fighting the cyborg Superman. And the Chrono Wave hits the cyborg, who's just like, oh, hey, I get to die. Finally. I know that feel, Hank. I know that feel, man. Uh, then we get uh, in 1987, 
Kimio, the Kimio Hoshi Doctor Light is recruited, while at the same time also being attacked by Hector Hammond. Um, then they go to Richard Superman, but it, Booster interferes, and well, yeah, then causing Superman to die, but yeah, so Booster joins them. Uh, then the Titans in the year 1983, they grab Starfire, uh, Ran and the uh, in, in, on Ran um, after Green Lantern Sinestro saves the day. Commandy grabs Sinestro, but it's explain everyone it's explain to everyone what's going on. And so, oh, and additionally, they also grab you know they, they've all. The story from Batman or from Detective 1027 has also occurred, so yeah, that that's happened. But they're then attacked by the new linear men. Ultra Ultra Humanite, Artemis, Matthew Ryder, Leary Lee, Ryak Ravager, Eradicator, Major Force, Knockout, Omac, Nemesis Kid. Uh, the Challenges of the Unknown pop up briefly. Steel and the Eradicator duke it out. Batman fights Omac. Omac being fully aware, claiming that uh, Wayne, Wayne Corp or Wayne Enterprises had played a major part in the corporate wars that uh, spawned Omac. But uh, things begin to splinter and. The villain appears, claiming everyone is an aberration and a threat to the fabric of time. The uh, the villain introduces himself as Dominus, with uh, Sinestro claiming that uh, he turned to Dominus in the criminal codices on Oa. He's believed dead by the Green Lantern Corps. But he basically sends the heroes to various points and decides to send other, send his uh, linear men after them. We get some odd uh, shots from other uh, timelines, such as Starter Rock fighting an Easy Company fighting dinosaurs, the JSA fighting the Fatal Five, Jonah Hex fighting the Manhunters. But yeah, you basically get the idea. Time is splintering. And now our heroes have ended up in different time what time boys they should be in. Batman seems to be in an odd future. Ruled over by Mr. Big. He faces some security troops, and, uh, yeah. Dominus explains to his linear men that, uh, you know, they're, each of them is going after one of the, uh, one of the specific members of, uh, one of the specific aberrations. Then he opens a portal, walks through, changes his appearance, and joins his black and white sitcom family for dinner. No, really, he, that, the and that is where the issue ends, and it will be continued in gener uh, Generations Forged? Yes, Generations Forged, which I believe drops in February. Now, I mentioned Future State a little bit ago. Future State is an initiative that uh, we'll be talking a little more about later. I, I'm actually planning on kind of maybe doing a, vid a video just about it, but yeah. Anyway, so a few of the future state books dropped this, well, technically next week, but I picked them up this week. The ones I picked up so far, I, 
or the next Batman and Harley Quinn. So we'll start off with Future State, the next Batman, number one. And uh, this has actually got three different... So there's a lot of stories with, going on within Future State, and it seems as though that with uh, next Batman we'll be getting basically three, story, three separate stories per issue. Um, so he's explained that Gotham is now a police state. There are drones overhead, facial recognition cameras on every corner. The magistrate, a private security force, patrols Gotham with shootout sight orders for anyone wearing a mask. And the person apparently narrating is suddenly claims to be number one on the uh, magistrate's kill list. Gets beaten up by Batman, who takes off his mask. Batman escapes. The cops realize, however, that apparently it's uh, the person that uh, the guy that Batman just stopped is the East Side Rapist. Um, Luke Fox has uh, a brief chat with his mom before going to visit his, his sister in the hospital. In Little Santa Prisa, um, two youths are being, uh, are looking at joining the, uh, a gang that's very clearly inspired by Bane. The, ba the Benitos. All they gotta do is uh, take someone out that would take, just as soon take them out. There he chanted a Bane mask. At the hospital, Luke is his sister, but apparently his, their brother's there too. Um, elsewhere, Cock was visiting her ex partner in a batting cage. <laughs> apparently, there's someone who claims to be a cop. He's helping. Uh, Criminals, you know, set up heists so long as they dis they leave town as soon as their, the heist is done. So the Bane Litos have gone into a, a, the territory of a rebel gang, the hype, hype, looking for a hype soldier for the kid for the two new recruits to go after. Um, however, they come they run across Batman. And, well. Batman does make a point of uh, saving the two kids and making sure the magistrate can't get to them. Oh, shit. Um, elsewhere in the city, a man is walking down the stairs when two masked uh, I say it's up here behind him, and that is where the story ends. Right, for our next story, we've got the Outsiders, uh, Katana, the Signal, and the Signal. Apparently, the Signal has been kind of doing a, doing a back and forth thing when it comes to in and out of Gotham, trying to get people out, try, basically working to get people out of Gotham. Um, Katana's kind of just saying, you know, uh, you know. This is the point where Gotham ends. And you go, you come past here, you deal with me. But she's mad at uh, Signal, basically saying, you know, make up your mind if you want to be in Gotham or out of Gotham. And she goes into Gotham, causes some additional trouble. Also, she's wearing a. Uh, oops, so powered armor, which, which includes a jetpack. Uh, digs her way through magistrate headquarters, fights uh, and runs the caliber. She and caliber do it out, and actually, a few times, caliber seems to get the upper hand. The idea being that, that you know, he's, he's, they're going to uh, destroy the blade so that, you know, that way, Katana's husband's soul will finally be at rest. Suddenly, a black bolt of lightning strikes constantly, including hitting Caliber. The black bolt of lightning turns out to be none other than J. 
Jefferson Pierce. Who informs her that uh, Magistrate had planted someone in the outside with Duke. Oh, the signal. Next up we have the Arkham Knights. Um, basically going, you know, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Magistrate. There's one PC number 12 has his eye is trying to basically wants to bring them down. Um, the Arkham the, the Arkham Knights are led by Astrid Arkham. Include Humpty Dumpty, Two Face, Zaz, Anarchy, Doctor Phosphorus, Clayface. They go. To, they rescue Killer Croc. And they're based out of what used to be Wayne Manor, but uh, they, apparently they're all doing therapy. Um, Croc is in a uh, basically in a healing coma. But uh, Astro goes to talk to Doctor Phosphorus. There's a serum he takes, which is which does is supposed to help, but doesn't so it, it's kind of it seems like he basically his body gets used to the serum. Uh, next, the uh, later the Arkham Knights go out, you know, run, come upon uh, Peacekeeper Twelve, and eventually they defeat Peacekeeper Twelve. Leaving his impaled helmet for all to see, and that is where the story and the issue ends. Which brings us to our other Future State book, and I think actually, yeah, the final book of the week: Future State Harley Quinn, number one. So as the issue begins, Harley is captured. Um, she puts up a good fight, but still, she's been captured. Being uh, questioned by a somewhat sane Dr. Jonathan Crane, he wants Harley to help them. Then you know, hey, kind of like, hey, you help us, you know, we'll do, you get, you know, special things. So first, uh, Harley tells Crane how to bring down Professor Pig. <laughs> she gets it. When that works, she gets out of she gets her uh, restraints taken off. Her reasoning being that uh, recreate Pig's creation only makes sure it's something that no artist would ever sign so their name to. She also gets some new, uh, some new clothes, but yeah. Next up, Firefly. So, reopening and rededicating a uh, orphanage with some cops disguised as firefighters. Firefly shows up. They take him down. Some of the cops, some of the magistrates, talk to them about. Uh, Scarecrow's past. They don't think he's all that sane. And, well, it's explained that uh, the last few, uh, you know, the first couple were appetizers for Harley. Now it's time for the entree. Black mask. And we get a guy wearing a, a black mask, mask knocking over a liquor store, a convenience store, only to get captured by Black Mask's gang. And promptly killed for impersonating Black Mask. And that is where the issue ends. That's be it for this week's roundup. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and Patreon can be found in the description box down below. Um, hopefully, next week we'll be back to our more normal schedule of um, at least a video on Wednesday. 
Um, this is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying live long, rock hard, and Happy New Year, everyone.